Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Now today I'm talking all about champion identity. So this is an extremely important concept for you guys to understand if you want to climb, improve as a player or a duo partner, improve in clash, any of these things. This will be a bit of a dense video in terms of information, but if you can get at least halfway through this video, I promise you, you'll understand the value, you'll see the value and you'll thank me later, all right? So trust me, it's gonna be a really, really good one. Now, where are we going to start? We're going to start by talking about champion identity and where does it where did it actually come from? Where did the term come from? Well, champion identity is a concept that is used to help to understand what, how, and why a champion does certain things at the highest level. And it also helps us facilitate discussion and provoke thought around understanding things like how does this champion want to play out fights and skirmishes? Where does this champion where exactly on the map does this champion actually want to fight? What sort of pace of the game does this champion thrive in? What sort of cham what sort of champions does this one synergize with and counter? How would I actually itemize and um, select runes for this champion? All the answers to these questions just come naturally if you understand the champion's identity. Now you may ask, how did I come up with this term? Where, where the hell did it come from? Well, in 2017 and 2018, I was reading a lot and I was trying to understand people better. And why did they make the decisions that they actually did? This was more in the context of coaching, so at the time I was actually a head coach, and certain behaviors always fascinated me. And I was like, why the hell would they do that? For example, I, I would always ask myself, why would a player not give 100% effort in this scrim? Why would they not want to contribute to this team discussion? Why didn't they clean up their desk and not contribute to the upkeep of the house? All these things always fascinated me, right? So... And I always found myself confused and finding no pattern with anything that was going on. And maybe this was due to me just being poor at reading people or maybe not giving people the time of day. I'm not sure. But eventually, I came across this book that spoke about decision making in the context of a person's identity. And there's two diagrams here I'll show you that really kind of put it in context. So here, basically the same diagrams, just giving it a little bit, uh, making one a little bit more clearer than the other. But basically, it's three circles. Now in the center, we've got the why or the identity, which is basically someone's identity as a person, you know, their worldview, their beliefs, their purpose, their cause, who they wish to become, why they're doing it, etc. The identity of the core of the person. Then you've got the, the, the middle, the middle rim, you've got uh, processes. This is basically the how, how they do things, you know, this is their habits, their, their routines, their systems, um, how they go about doing things. And then you've actually got about the, the outer ring, you've actually got um, the what, the outcomes. This is just genuinely just the results. What do you get at the end of it all, okay? So, now, rather than viewing each behavior or output in isolation, I tried to listen to people uh, more and actually understand why they were doing things and get a better understanding of the person at an identity level. This allowed me to f foresee future problems and either change the way things were done or actually speak to them on a level that they would resonate. It basically increased communication, understanding, and overall empathy levels. Now, but the biggest benefit I actually found was that by understanding a person at an identity level, you can actually beha uh, actually aid behavior change at an identity level by affecting their worldview and beliefs rather than just scratching the surface of the what or literally the, the result itself. So I began thinking to myself a little more, wouldn't this be a great way to understand champions on a much deeper level? This would allow us to draft more effectively. It would allow players from other roles to understand champions to a whole different level even though they didn't play them. It would make conversations about why certain things did or didn't work a lot more clear. I found myself asking players questions like these. Um, Shern, what is Elisa's identity? And if we actually dissect this question a little deeper, um, because it is an extremely loaded question, I'm basically asking, what does Elise want to happen in this game? How does Elise want to go about it? And why is this good for Elise in the first place? Why is it even good for Elise in the first place? So over time, when I actually asked these questions consistently, I was, I was able to actually piece together why or how certain what's, so the outcome, I was actually going to tie, I was tying, tying the outcomes or the, the, the end, end results to how, and then the how to the why of that champion. So eventually the players were asking questions to each other like, what is the identity of this champion? Or given the identity of this champion, why was I playing this with it? This doesn't make any sense. If this, if the identity of this champion is all about the early game and diving and stuff, why was I playing 
um, Tom Kench, or why was I playing Shivana Jungle? This doesn't make any sense. Or things like, doing Dragon here doesn't make sense for my champion's identity, or I didn't know my identity this game, or things like, I don't understand X champion's identity, so I can't really play her yet in scrims. So, eventually it extended to team composition identity. Our team comp as a whole is made up of all these champs, so what and how do we actually want to operate? This made conversation much easier, much more efficient, and actually allowed players, and more importantly me as a coach, to get aligned with how things were meant to be played out, so we could improve as a whole and actually get into the nitty gritty about team fighting and macro. This was extremely useful because when talking about macros such as lane assignments, objectives, map movements, etc., if we were aligned on the identity of the way the comp wanted to play out, figuring out the how and the what is super easy. Using a very simple example, guys. If we know that our composition's identity as a whole is largely dependent on front-to-back team fights at major objectives at our two item spikes on our carries, we know that potentially giving the first or sometimes second dragon may be necessary. You know, so that, so we can we can reverse engineer what we would do given the identity of our composition. So I also found that if we weren't aligned on the why or the you know the identity of something, conversations and discussions even and even just reviews went round in circles. So this is actually an example of a of a possible conversation. Conversations like this actually went on all the time in my team. So the top laner would say something like I wanted Elise to come dive top. And then the AD carry would say, no, but I wanted Elise to hover me bot so we, we could get a reset. And then the top laner says, no, but for me, it's so big. And then the AD carry is, oh, but it's so big for me too. You're just greedy. So this is this basically pointless conversation. People get angry. Um, they waste time in pointless conversation. People get tilted. But if we actually started the conversation by saying, where should Elise be, given the identity of our composition, we can really start to understand why a certain decision should actually be made. For example, maybe getting our, is our top, uh, getting our top laner ahead more important than getting our AD carry ahead, given um, we want to be playing off two item spikes of our AD carry and mid laner, or given that this is the identity of our team comp. You can start to see how this quality of conversation makes getting better at the game so much easier. So I also realized, actually, if a player understood a champion's identity, it was actually easier for them to perform consistently within high-pressure matches because they knew exactly what sort of conditions they had to bring about. Then slowly, we actually spoke about forming our team identity, so rather than in-game stuff, out-of-game, so this was Direwolves' identity, but um, because we changed rosters so much, it never really came about, so we ended up just putting that to the side. Now... Now, let's get to the, the important stuff. How does this affect you, right? You in your solo queue climb? Well, tying this all together, I believe the better you understand your champion's identity, the better you will be at reviewing, improving, and reaching higher levels of play, and just overall having an easier time climbing with that champion. This is also coherent with my theory that having a small champion pool comprised of three champions to be an extremely effective way of climbing. So let's actually get more detail now with an example. So I recently picked up Azir, basically from scratch, given that I actually hadn't played Azir for years, for my Azir guide that I actually recently finished. In my head, when I just started playing Azir, I started with a bunch of assumptions and hypotheses and even some invisible narr narratives that I had to reflect on and actually bring to the forefront of my mind in order to know my current stance on the identity of Azir. So it looked a little like this. These are some of the, the things that were th running through my head when I first picked up this champion. Azir is an immobile scaling mage. Azir needs a lot of time to be useful. He needs two items to be able to do anything. Um, Azir only wants to play front to back fights. Azir can only carry with frontline. Azir only needs, can only play with Conqueror effectively. Azir has to play lane slow and generally wants to keep the lane on his side. Azir can't roam well and really doesn't want to leave mid lane. Azir is only good into low threat and low range team comps. As we know, um, because, as we know, a lot of these may not be right, they, they, and most of them were actually wrong. So I, what I actually did was I started to play each game with intention to test these theories, some of, some of which were right, some of which were wrong. 
over a series of 30, 40, 50 games, slowly your hypothesis and theory about the identity of the champion gets clearer and the smoke begins to fade. All right? So you will start to create new hypotheses based off of these results and outcomes. Now, what's interesting is that the more games of Focus Solo Q you play, the clearer the understanding of that champion's identity will be because you're actually testing its limits and seeing what it's capable of. Another super interesting phenom phenomenon that I've actually realizing, uh, realized is that when I didn't have this theory in mind, I viewed outcomes and results in isolation, which didn't help me improve at the champion nearly as much because the decisions, they, the outcomes, they had no context. For example, a jungler could go for a gank, and it might work in that specific situation, but if the jungler understood why that gank was the correct play, and actually why it worked, then it's going to be a lot easier for that jungler to look to replicate that play in future games. Because, you know, he knows the, the actual factors about why that champion, that the actual decision was coherent with that champion's identity. Okay, so what we're going to do now, let's actually look, and I'm actually going to go through an example of a play from one of my recent Azir videos. So in this situation here, I was playing Azir, and I actually built a slow push here, and usually what I would do, given my hypothesis about Azir, is that I would slow poke under tower, just poke them under tower, maybe ward one side, and just focus all my damage and all my time and energy on the tower. Um, so what I actually did, is that I slowly, eventually started testing. Okay, what happens if I actually roam? Is Azir a decent roaming champion? If I get into these skirmishes, how well does he actually operate? So in this play, I actually go for a roam, and we actually end up killing this um, vein, and we end up on the back end here getting a triple kill. Okay, so I can look at this play in two, two ways. I can look at it, one, in isolation, saying to myself, Oh, this was a really cool play. End of story. Well, oh, really good play, Curtis. Well done. Give myself a pat on the back. Or I can look at it in the grand scheme of my champion's identity or what I, and what I was actually hypothesizing. I can say to myself, Curtis, didn't you actually say that Azir couldn't roam? Didn't you actually say that it was better to never leave mid lane and always just poke them under tower because Azir can't um, go to skirmishes and doesn't operate well or doesn't have much mobility? Maybe I was actually wrong with that. Maybe I actually underrated completely Azir's shuffle and ability to um, scale terrain. Maybe I actually tunnel visioned on not leaving mid lane at all. So I'm like, okay, let's actually go back here. What were the conditions that made this successful? Oh, I slow built. Okay, what matchups can I actually slow build a wave in? Ah, so maybe I can only roam in matchups where I can slow build waves. So you can kind of see, now I'm starting to think about and start to create another hypothesis here, which my hypothesis might be, oh, Azir actually can roam if um, I'm able to slow build waves. Or maybe Azir can roam if my jungler is in the area. Or maybe my, if I have enough mana to use my abilities to terrain scale. Or maybe if I'm only level 6, etc. I can start to hypothesize and test then in the next game, I'll do the same thing. Let's test my theory about roaming again and see what went wrong, see what went right, so I can actually get a clearer picture about the identity of why, actually why that decision works. Don't just look at the decision and the outcome in isolation. Look at it in relation to the identity of that champion. Now, the other benefit of actually understanding champion identity is that it can help you decide what sort of decisions you should or shouldn't make inside of a game. That This is actually how I got so good at using Twisted Fate R because I was so clear on his identity and knew exactly what I needed to do to win games as Twisted Fate. Once the identity is clear, the behaviors and the how become much easier to improve on, which gives context to the what, to the actual end result and that actual certain decision. Okay, so if I just played Twisted Fate and use R's all the time, some did work, some didn't work, and I didn't actually connect why certain things worked, why they didn't work. Again, I'll just be basically coin flipping, as you guys say all the time, my game's a coin flip, well, you're making a coin flip by probably not doing this thing at all. Okay, so... Um, more importantly, guys, if you have a theory about a champ's identity, it will give you a baseline to begin theorizing on how to approach a given matchup. So let's actually look at another Azir, Azir example here, guys. So in this fort here, I was actually playing Azir versus Zereth. Now, I actually had a theory. Even though I hadn't played this matchup specifically in probably three, four years, my theory was, okay, Curtis, 
Um, you think that against high cooldown mages like Victor, like Velkoz, like Zerith, like Lux, etc. If you push them in a lot, that's going to get you to level 6 for free. It's going to allow, allow myself to get tempo bases. It's going to allow you to have a really solid laning phase. So that was my theory. And so I did it. I executed it. I had all these little ideas in my head and it ended up working really well. And if we fast forward, it gets to the point in the game where I get a tempo reset. I'm able to get a full buy on this guy, take really, really favorable trades like this. I'm about to hit level 6. He has not recalled at all, um, etc, etc. Now, I can look at this in two ways. I can, I can look at it in the sense that I've already had a theory, which I've tested, and now I've proven it, or at least at least one tick towards this, is being a, this actually worked. So I'm actually adding a tick or adding a little bit of credibility to my theory. Or I could have had zero theory, either autopiloted or just played the game for the sake of playing the game and then blame it on jungle difference or blame it on player difference or just say, oh, this was just a good day for me. I just played well today. Or this guy just played, he was a bad player. This guy was just platinum, whatever I say. Um, you know, it, it allows you to actually test, theorize, improve, learn, refine. And it gives you a baseline to start with. When you And when you come into any laning phase, have any form of theory. Try it out. Why does it feel good? Why does it not feel good? Does it feel good to get pushed in? Does it feel bad to get pushed in? What items feel really good? What positions in the lane feel really good? Where does it feel good to position specifically in the lane, etc.? You can start to refine. This is how you improve. This is how you get a better understanding of the champion's identity. And this is how you really get to understand how to play out all the matchups to a small micro, that small micro detail level. Furthermore, what it actually does is it actually allows you to know which sort of jungle synergize with your champion. So if you know that your champion wants to fight Scuttles or wants to play off this item, it doesn't want river fights, it only wants jungle fights, etc, etc, you can actually talk with your duo partner or your clash player or whatever it is and be like, you know what, maybe this is a really good game for Azir because I know it works really well with Sejuani and Zac with the front line and where they want to play around objectives, etc. At least you have a theory, you go in, you test it, you refine, then you can start to optimize duo with your, your jungler. You can optimize how you can play that mid-jungle 2v2. I found it to be really effective uh, for, that, for, for that specific thing. Now, after my personal uh, 50 games of Azir, I realized the following points that there were like four basically overarching lane approaches. Azir can actually roam quite well. Azir can't just aff afford to farm, sit there, farm and scale because solo queue's too chaotic. Azir is best with frontline and multiple threat comms, but doesn't always need it. Azir feels best with double Dorans due to the speed in which he needs to play the lane. Azir gets cha uh, countered by champions like Echo and Diana because they don't allow him to abuse his range advantage, uh, etc, etc. And you can see... How many of my initial theories were debunked? A lot of them were wrong, some of them were correct, and this is how I learn a champion to a high level. Now, one thing that is important to understand is that you will, at the start, when, say when you just pick up a champion, or maybe you've never thought about your champion that deeply, you will barely know anything about the champion's identity in the beginning. You, and eventually over time, the more games you play, you'll slowly be able to add more and more layers and just dig, dig deeper, dig deeper, dig deeper until you get to a point you just, you're just literally aligned completely. You understand crystal clear the identity of that champion. So now guys, I actually pose a challenge to you guys watching this video. In the description, I've actually put a link to a Google Doc, which has basically um, a, a sheet that I've made up for you guys as a template to get you started, okay? This is, is going to help you to get the creative juices flowing. It's going to get you thinking about your champion. It's got a few questions, a few things probing you um, to get you guys thinking about your champion's identity, etc. And what I actually recommend is... Maybe go through it with your duo partner, go through it with your friend, maybe a guy that you sh play the same lane with and you share ideas with, maybe it's with your clash team. Get your that person to fill it out for one of their champions and start sharing some of their ideas. Share your results with me on Discord. I would love to hear what sort of feedback you guys give me. Um, I and I've literally done this exercise with one of my teams with Direwolves before. It's a really good exercise to get understanding a champion. Um, and it can really level up your game. Okay, guys? So, give it a shot. Um, let me know how it goes. Hopefully, this video really adds a bit of clarification on what champion identity is. How you can use it. Why it's important. Now, you can kind of see how important it actually is. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate the sport. Cheers.